Hi you guys and welcome back for another video. Today we're going to keep it basic. Girl chat. Sis, we need to have a real conversation about healthcare, about Jesus, about raising kids. It's just ridiculous. And we're going to run a couple errands. I have to go grocery shopping. I have to get an oil change. I have to return some cast iron pots to home goods. And uh, that's really it. So let's get this grocery shopping on and popping. Let's go. It's hot out here. All right, we're done with groceries. I'm gonna go ahead and return these cast iron pots to home goods. You guys, I went crazy. Guilty as charged, hello. I went crazy and I bought a couple of cast iron pots because of the Teflon documentary that I watched where Teflon is really bad for you and it is so I went and bought cast iron pots and then I realized that I already had the exact same size cast iron pots that I bought at home so then I searched on Amazon and found an even better deal and so whatever my point is I'm going back to home goods I'm returning the cast iron pots that I bought and then I'm gonna get an oil change and then I'm gonna head home because it's already 11 and I'm tired and it's hot oh and I stayed under budget. I said $150 budget, and I think it came out to like $147. Super proud of myself, especially with inflation rates right now, especially because normally I spend like $300 at grocery stores because I go crazy. And because I shop at Sam's, but I buy in bulk so it lasts us for a while. I split it up, freeze it, call it a day. But the way my budget is set up right now, I really need to cut expenses because I'm quitting my job. Or I did quit my job. This is my last week at my job. Going back to school, so we really need to watch our money because we will no longer have dual income. I'm five generations of blazing a trail. I'm at Vegas. I'm barefoot and bareback and born tough as nails. Oh, 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 oh. They knew I was coming right up front. I got a parking spot. You guys, I forgot my receipt, so I got a gift card, but that's okay because you can always find stuff to buy at home goods, right? My child is sick and dying, so we're making an immunity, immunity boosting soup that I found on, print, on Pinterest. It's pretty much a bunch of vegetables with turmeric powder in it, and some chicken, and hopefully it's delicious. So I'm taking all my old vegetables, cutting them up, veggies I need to cook, obviously. Ugh, glory, glory, hallelujah. And I'm gonna roast them. And then I'm gonna make them into a little soup. Super easy, super simple. <coughs> That's her dying in the background. <laughs> I'm not dying. What are you doing then? I'm coughing. Okay. Oh, it's getting too hot. Jesucristo. Garlic. And let's take this and shove this over here. That's good enough. I'm gonna take 
get some garlic, lots and lots of garlic, because garlic is healing. I've been watching Barbara O'Neill on the, the tube, on the YouTube. Well, <laughs> yeah, I'm becoming hurt. I started using the word like satiating. Satiating means things that make you full, but also using the earth to heal you. Barbara O'Neill would have put socks on your feet or would have put onions on your feet and then covered them with the sock because she says that's what will cure a cold faster than medicine. Getting ready for this. Ba -na 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 -na. Oh, this, I feel like I'm in my Rachel Ray era. My practices. Restalos, muy bien, muy bien. Can you give me some um, potatoes? Oh, I don't want them here. Oh, that's not delicious. You are worthy, you are awesome. Okay, you guys, I'm putting lotion on my feet because I live in a really, really dry state. And, ugh, it's the nastiest thing to have dry feet, but whatever. Here's my pile. I ran so many errands today. Thank God, I finished some grocery shopping. Oh, I got a text bay and tell him to buy <laughs> olive oil and lemons because I'll be putting lemons on everything. Lemons in my water, lemons in my agua, agua mineral preparada. The lemons be lemoning, okay? And so anyways, I ran a lot of errands today. It's currently almost 5.10 and I have towels left to fold. I have another load of laundry to do, but you know what? That's okay. I'll probably throw it in and then leave it in the dryer for probably until tomorrow because it is what it is. We can't be over here rushing because when you're working full time and then you still got to take care of your house, sis, it never ends. But anyways, okay, I just wanted to talk to you guys, whether you're a young girl, an older girl, a grown woman, whatever, whatever stage of life that you're in, I wanted to talk about the dangers of hookup culture from one hookup culture e to another hookup culture e <laughs> i just wanted to talk about it because i feel like oftentimes like the world portrays like free the nip and free the pee and free the whatever have an amazing sex life and sex in the city and what's the new revamp that I was obsessed with for a little bit, but then I was like, oh, this is too much for me. It's crazy when you get like, like this with Jesus or like get closer in your Christian walk. Certain things, <laughs> certain things do like low key bother you. With that being said, hookup culture is dangerous for many reasons. But my biggest reason is that oftentimes it's portrayed as like this liberating thing when in reality, it's a very hurtful, demeaning and vulnerable culture to get into. And I wanna say that it's not worth it. Like it's not worth it being a part of her cup culture. It's not worth it like waiting for a dude that keeps telling that keeps telling you that he's not ready for a relationship but when he is you're the one you're not it's like it's not it's just not worth it it's not worth it to be in the throttle is that what it is where people are like poly polygamists and they have like two or three partners it's not worth it people swear up and down 
that they're so happy but like i just want to say that's cat like that's a lie they're not happy they're very miserable when you're talking about like free the net and free the pee and free your sex life and free all kinds of this and hook up with whoever you want oftentimes people that are in that stage of life it's because they've either been hurt or because they're not ready for something super serious because they've tried something super serious and it didn't go the way they wanted it to go. So I'm not saying they're heartbroken. I'm simply saying that maybe at some point someone played a game with their heart. I'm coming from the other end where just to give you guys a little bit of background, I was a single mom for about 10 years. So I actually got married at 18 years old, really young, really young, dumb and wildin'. <laughs> young, dumb and free. I think it's Khaled that sings that song, but real d young, dumb and wildin'. Got married super young, had a kid by 19, got divorced by 22. And then I was a single mom until 32. Like I never lived with a guy. I was in a couple of like relationships, but honestly, like dudes were just taking advantage of me. They were just treating me like crap. They were just like, I don't know. And I, th I thought like, oh, this is nice. Like I'm freed, I'm this, it's my choice to stay or whatever. But no, I was like a really hurt girl. Cause all I wanted was to be in a relationship. After my divorce, I needed some time to heal. I needed some time to not be in a serious relationship. I needed some time to be single. And the first thing I did was go on a date, like hop on a date and try and search for love, try and search for something that was empty. When what I really should have been doing was pouring my heart out and at my knees and my face on the ground to Jesus, right? But it is what it is. And so I spent 10 years being alone and not necessarily alone like i said but not in a serious relationship not live not living with anybody not like seriously dating anybody and then i met my my current husband and <sighs> that man and i have been through a lot him and i when we met he was he had just had a baby, so his baby was like a month old and he didn't tell me by the way, but whatever, we're past that. I love my stepson. He had just had a baby and I think there was like a lot of emotional baggage there, like a soul tie left to his son's mom because with her, they were kind of just like a part of hookup culture. She got pregnant and they tried to make it work because she got pregnant it didn't work they ended up having a baby when they were not together and then he ended up moving to vegas and then we met and when we met um i had just gotten out of like the one kind of serious relationship that i had but that dude was chaos too when i tell you people were like taking advantage of you or whatever i was in one of those and <clears throat> we met and we got into a relationship immediately. I think it was like we met in October and we were in like a serious relationship by December. He had just had a baby in August and I had just gotten out of my serious relationship in July. So July, August, September, October, not even three months of being free. Um, he is August, September, October, two months of just having a baby and doing his own thing, right? And so we started hanging out, we started, dating we started getting real serious he started spending the night but there was a lot of like bondage and a lot of soul ties and a lot of like defeat <sighs> a lot of like fighting and enemies a lot of just like pushback like really pushback and i think a lot of the pushback comes from like if you're not in in a heavenly relationship if you're not in a relationship that honors the lord if you're not submitted to god first there's a lot of chaos and a lot of thoughts and a lot of like bondage that the devil puts you in to stop you from being happy so our relationship was full of just like a lot of a lot of anger and a lot of like trauma and a lot of drama and a lot of pain that we never healed so we're we were constantly at each other's throats and um, we tried to get past it. 
and we were together for about three years right timeline 2018 2021 18 19 20 21 we were together for three years when i broke it off he did something stupid and i was like i'm done like i'm not i can honestly say like i never caught him cheating on me but for sure a lot of emotional cheating going on we broke up and um in that time we both found god like i was always lukewarm going to church bench warmer seat warmer church goer like just showing up to church and that's when i realized like god is real in my breakup i realized like you got to read your bible you got to build a relationship with jesus you got to know what you believe in you got to find friends and community that's willing to keep you accountable when it comes to your christian walk and in that year of us splitting up my husband was basically like, I'm good if you want to follow God. Because before that, like I said, I was a churchgoer and he would kind of like go to church with me every once in a while. But it was like, whatever. And he never got serious about it. In that year, though, he had he ended up making a friend that was a pastor. And that guy just bred like he just exhaled life into my husband when it came to Jesus. And in that year... God changed the both of us to make us like a puzzle piece for each other. Now, we've been married July. It's August now. We've been married our, our first year. So we were split up for a year. We got back together. We found God after a year of being split up. We got back together for a year and a half, I want to say, for like a year. Yeah, for like a year max, year and a half. Because I knew when we got together, I straight up was like, you're on a timeline, buddy. I'm meant to be a wife. I'm not meant to be a girlfriend. And we're not going to be hooking up like we used to hook up. God is good, though, because he kept us separate. Like, he lived in a different state. I lived in a different state. I'm not going to lie. We crossed um, we crossed the line a few times. But for the most part, I really try to stay heavy. Like, no, we're not hooking up. No, we're not. We, we, we bent boundaries. We crossed boundaries a few times is what I'm trying to say. But... For the most part, I was like, no, bro. Like, if you would come visit me, you're sleeping on the couch. Like, we're not hooking up. I'm really trying to do it right by God. Like, I don't want to... I just... I'm not going to be a hookup girlfriend anymore. Like, I'm ready to be a wife. And if you're not ready to have a wife, I'm ready to find my husband. And I'm not going to be stuck in hookup culture with you. And so, whatever, let it go. We ended up getting married actually exactly a year and in exactly a year he moved down here the day he got here i was like what's the plan bro because if we're not getting married you're not living with me we're not about to play house like i'm really in tune with jesus i'm really trying to be on my christian walk i'm really trying to be a wife i'm really trying to be good for somebody you know and he was like no we're getting married he asked me to get married he proposed literally super cute very sentimental to me i thought i wanted like the fireworks and stuff but he didn't he just kind of surprised me by saying he left something in the car came back inside got on my knee and proposed super cute and um and that same day i was like okay what do, like what are we gonna do let's just get married today like i don't want to wait i love you let's start our lives we got married until so now here we are a year later it's been a lot we've been through a lot in a year Thank God, though, we pushed through it. There's so many times where the D word came out, but I'm really trying to not use it anymore. Like, God, rebuke that word, divorce. Rebuke that word from my vocabulary. I don't want it. But prior to that, there's like a bond when you... It's like scientists. I know it's scientific, but there's like a bond you form, clinical clinical chemically your brain changes a little bit it's like endorphins and when you exchange your body with somebody else and hook a culture you're creating a stronghold you're creating a soul tie you're creating a chemical emotional bond with them <laughs> and creating a chemical emotional bond with someone that is not your spouse is extremely dangerous I'll never forget, I think I was watching Ruslan, Ruslan KD, he's a pretty cool channel that I like to watch every once in a while, and he was talking about how 
I don't I think he was reading a book or something but anyways he was saying like that the devil will try and do everything he can to get you to have sex before you're married and then after you're married he'll do everything he can to get you to stop having sex because there's a bond there and a connection and there's love that's interchanged when you sleep with somebody and so the dangers between behind hookup culture are tremendous right and so i guess to keep this conversation semi short i'm talking to you baby if you are holding on to this dude and he's kind of been stringing you along and telling you that you're the one but he's not ready for a relationship and you are stop giving up the goods leave him leave him in your dust bye see you later you ain't it i'm too good for you love ya but no thanks because i think it's lauren hill where she's like why be a hard rock when you're why be a hard rock when you're a queen lauren hill she says don't be a hard rock when you know you are a gem you're a diamond stop allowing guys to treat you like a hard rock if that boy keeps telling you that one day you're it then one day you're gonna be his wife but right now he's not ready to even have a girlfriend move on because he's just feeding you a lie to keep you around if you are in this relationship with this guy and you're living with him and people keep brainwashing you into like oh make sure you live together before you get married pray about it because i would not ever tell anybody to do that because it's not worth it it's too easy it's too easy to walk away when you're just living with someone versus when you've made the commitment, when you've made the vows, when you have committed to be married to somebody and you're there and you love them. It's so much harder to be like, I want a divorce. Like it is, it's harder. And people can sit here and be like, it's just a piece of paper. It's not, it's not just a piece of paper. It's a law that goes into effect. You are bound to that person. They can have half your stuff if you end up getting divorced. If you're just hooking up with somebody, they're not i think it's like common law if in certain states they can have half your stuff after seven years versus marriage it's like immediate they're taking half your stuff if you decide to get divorced listen if no one's ever had the talk with you i'm gonna have the mama bear talk the big the big sister talk the crazy auntie talk the best friend talk that cares about you um it's not worth it Hookup culture is a disaster. It's not worth who you are. It's not worth giving a little bit, a little piece of yourself to some rando. It's not worth telling someone certain things when they're nothing um, to you. It's not worth interchanging words. It's not worth interchanging emotions. It's not worth interchanging time. It's not worth, it's not worth it. If you're in a single season and you're just hanging out with somebody to hang out with them and hooking up with them just to hook up with them because you're scared to be alone, sis, be alone and read your Bible, okay? Be alone and join a community. Find somebody, find a life group at your church. Find a girls group at your church. There's plenty of other women that you can hang out with, whether they're single, whether they're married, whether they're widowed, whether they're starting their journey with church and Jesus, starting their relationship with Jesus. Like there's plenty of people that you can hang out with so you can stop downgrading who you are cause you're not a hard rock, you're a gem, you're a diamond. Stop allowing these dudes to come in and out of your heart, in and out of your life, in and out of your body and treat you like garbage. You're not garbage. Hookup culture is a disaster. It's not good for you. And if you pray for your kingdom spouse, he will eventually show up. But it's God's timing. It's God's will, not your timing and not your will. My daughter's mopping. <sighs> smells really good. But that's really all I had to tell you guys. I did a lot today. Um, I don't know. I just feel like I just feel like, baby, I love you, man. I don't want you to like, and obviously I don't know you <laughs> per se, but if you're watching this, it's for a reason. And 
I feel like you're loved too much to give yourself away to somebody that doesn't love you. Valorate, value yourself. Know who you are. Look for a hobby. Stop making a boy a hobby. Stop putting that man on a pedestal, the pedestal that's only supposed to have one man and that man is Jesus Christ because Jesus Christ died on the cross for your sins. Stop putting these basic boys on pedestals that they don't belong on. Thank you guys for coming to my big sis, little mama, crazy auntie, <laughs> Christian homie, girl chat. Thanks for watching my crazy reset video. Here's a couple other videos that you guys can watch. Send this to a friend. I love you and just know you're so much better than how that man treats you, okay? All right, bye babies.